Well, some people say, ah, I don't know, how could we prove that? Well, it's real simple. Suppose I have this dish of water, and I take myself a piece of cotton fabric, whatever it is, and you throw it down in that water, what does it do? Yeah, well, it sucks it up, goes right to the bottom. I mean, you're talking three, four, five seconds, boom, it's on the bottom, full of water. Okay, that didn't look real good in the, in the wet test. So let's take, um, well, let's, uh, let's take some feathers, some down, and let's sprinkle a little bit of our feathers in there. What do they do when I sprinkle them down in there? And people say, now, wait a minute, ducks float. How come ducks float? Yeah, you ever seen what a duck does most of the time? A duck or a goose or any of those things? What are they doing out there? It's called preening. They got that bill going through those feathers all the time. They're picking up oils that come out of the preen gland and they spread them out. They have to spend half their life doing that because as long as they keep their feathers oiled, they're waterproof. When you take them away from that duck, he's unhappy about that to begin with, and then they're no longer maintained. And when they get wet, guess what they do when you put them in water? They suck up the water. Now, they won't sink to the bottom, but they're sucked right down into the miscus, the surface tension of the water, and they're just full of water. Okay? Now then you say, how about wool? What if we take wool and throw it in water? Guess what it does? It is interesting, and it is superior, because when you first throw it in the water, it lays on that water for quite a while. As a matter of fact, you may be two or three minutes, but you can start to see the water work up through those things. And then after several minutes, it's on the bottom the same as cotton. So wool is much slower on its uptake of water. That's what's good about it. And when it does get wet, it doesn't swell up and collapse like down and like cotton do. So it actually is warmer when wet than cotton or down. That is a true statement. But compared to some of the other things that we have available to us, it's not nearly as good. We have the synthetic materials, and that's what I want to use primarily for my insulation, all synthetics. The primary synthetics that you have, you've got polyester, polyurethanes, and polypropylenes. Those are all available. Now then, the most common is polyester, all these white puffy kinds of things. They come with all kinds of names on them. They're polar this and polar that and thermal this and thermal that. They're all polyesters. How can you tell? Read the tag. It'll say 100% polyester. Basically the same material, just formed a little bit differently. They're primarily used in puffy batting materials like this, or they may be woven into a fabric. You have the polypropylenes that are primarily woven into some fabrics. And then we have polyurethane that we use. Now then, the insulation of choice. I want to get you to the bottom line very quickly because I'm going to tell you this. If you do what I do, you can do what I do. You can do some amazing things. I'm going to choose to use for my primary insulation throughout all of my cold weather clothing, open cell polyurethane foam plastic. Now let's do a little water test for just a moment. You say, well, I don't know about this stuff. Suppose we take some of this polyester batting material, like a qualifill or a polar tech or one of those, and I throw it on a dish of water. What does it do? Absolutely nothing. It just lays there. In fact, it'll lay there forever. Now, will the surface be wet where it's in contact with the water? Of course it will be. It's not a material that we would say is perfectly hydrophobic, where it has hydro water phobic fear of or dislike of. It will, in fact, be wet where it touches the water, but it doesn't suck water up into it. It doesn't wick it into it. Suppose I take some of this foam, and some people say, now, wait a minute. That looks like a sponge to me. We'll try it. Take it to a dish of water and just lay it down on that dish of water and see how long it floats there. You know what it'll do? It will float forever. Now, will it be wet where it touches the water? Of course it will be. It's not perfectly hydrophobic. It'll be damp on that surface. And if you push it down in the water and squeeze the air out of it and let go in there, it'll fill up with water and you pick it up and it drains down. The water runs out of it. But it has some very, very special properties in what it will do in clothing. And that's why I use it over anything else. Now then, if you want, do your own test. If you're going like, I don't, you know, on this synthetic issue, what you should do is uh, get yourself a cotton sock, a wool sock, and a nylon sock. A nylon, polyester, polypropylene, ac acrylic, any of those blends will be fine. Just 100% synthetic. Put them in the water. Get them wet. Take them to your dryer. Throw them in the dryer. Turn the dryer on. Come back in 15 or 20 minutes 
What do you have? You have a cotton sock and a wool sock full of hot water, and you have a dry nylon sock. And you have to throw the cotton and wool back in there and let them grind away in there for two hours at 140 degrees to bake the water out of them. What's the problem with water in winter clothing? What did I tell you? The thing that we're going to use for insulation is just air. That's all that we want, trap stabilized, non-moving air. And if I take a little bit of air out of my clothing and replace it with a little bit of water, guess what? I don't have a little impact. I have a huge impact because water transfers heat 25 times faster than air. So you take out a little bit of air, put in a little bit of water, huge impact on your insulation value. So moisture management, how clothing and insulations handle moisture is of critical importance for your survivability in tough situations. Again, if you know what I know and do what I do, you can have the experiences that I have. This is not about me being a tough guy. It's not about me being smart. As a matter of fact, I've probably done about everything wrong you can do out there. It's just that I don't like pain, so I learn from uh, those experiences. Winter is not a threat to me. It doesn't have to be a threat to you. The dead of winter, as a matter of fact, there's some tremendous advantages to the cold and to the winter over the summer.